That's how you fucking create wealth. You don't create wealth by sitting there and fucking doing this. You create wealth by adding value to someone else and they give you some value back. So if you want to make more money, what do you need to go do today? Add more value. You, know, you, can, you can network, but you need to add more value to people. The reason why Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, is so fucking wealthy because he helped so many fucking people get together. Not only on the employee side, not only on the investment side, but also on the human side. How many of you guys have met a girl or a guy or a friend through Facebook, Instagram? Anybody? Think about that. Think about that. He created a platform for you to get together to build a relationship. Why? That's why it's one of the most successful companies out there because it's, 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 it's the key to everything, relationships. So why do we do this? Why do we talk about team so much? Why is it so important to focus on team? Why do we say, come here at 10 o'clock and, and win? You don't have to be here. You don't have to. But being by yourself out there trying to, imagine this. Imagine you had no office, no training, no fucking team. It's just you and a fucking box of tablets. And you got to go out there every single day to go hunt. Every day. How many of you guys would mentally start to deteriorate a little bit after a couple of days or a couple of weeks? Raise your hand if you think you would deteriorate a little bit. You would get a little bit unmotivated, okay? So what I realized a long time ago, I was like, okay, people are, it's very hard to start a fire by yourself. Like, you need a rock and you need some fucking whatever that shit is, right? You need two things to spark you up, huh? Flint, Flint whatever it is, right? Don't throw me in the wild. I'll fucking, I'll, I'll fucking die, okay? People want to be a part of something. You're either a part of something or you're a part of fucking nothing. When you're a part of nothing, you are empty. You're not happy. Does that make sense? Anybody part of a fucking community? Right? Anybody part of a, a group, a networking group or something? Right? How many of you guys love art? Anybody love art here? I don't know. I don't like art. I'm just saying. Art, maybe you're in some group chats, Facebook group chats or art. There's so many groups and communities out there. Why is that? Because we have a deep desire in our hearts to connect with other people. So if you want to create Success for a long period of time, you focus on team. You look to your left, you look to your right. You value that because not every company has that kind of value. Some companies, they, how many of you guys have been a part of a company they don't care about team? Where you feel like you're by yourself. Anybody worked in a, in a, in a company like that? Okay. How many of you guys here have been helped by somebody in the field or over the phone or in person about a tip or something? How many of you guys have been helped here by somebody? That is the fucking culture. A lot of people think that, you know, as a CEO, you're sitting here in a fucking top and, uh, you know, managers and fucking supervisors and fucking employees. And that's how they think. The people on the bottom do all the work. No, no. It's the opposite. It's like this. The CEO has to worry about the team. Right? It's the C. Like, you're carrying the fucking company. Then the manager is carrying the company. Then the leaders are carrying the company. Right? That's how it's supposed to be done. It's an upside down fucking pyramid. Because the team comes first. Because without the team, there is no fucking CEO. Without the team, there is no business. Without the team, you can't go out there by yourself and be motivated every fucking day to create fucking 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. It's very difficult. You need that environment. The environment is what supports you. How many of you guys work by yourself here? Like by yourself? By yourself? Okay. I would highly recommend you getting one buddy. Okay? And i tell you why. I've always done it this way and it always worked. Having one buddy does a few things. When I was working with one of my guys, his name was Jason, okay? As a matter of fact, I'll even go backwards. When I was in time on the cable, I had a buddy named Dippin. Okay, that was his name. Right? So me and Dippin, we used to work together. Because I, I went to work at time on the cable my first day. He was my guy that sat right next to me. So, hey, what's up? My name is Michael. He's like, my name is Dippin. Nice to meet you, bro. He was Indian. I was, I sp he speaks, uh, uh, you know, uh, he was from Kudrati, India. I'm fucking, you know, I speak Russian. So he could speak to the Indian people. He could speak Urdu, Hindu, whatever, and I could speak Russian. So we used to say, you know what, let's go to the Indian area. I'm going to, you know, do what I got to do. And you come to the Russian areas with me. So we flipped flopped on territories all the time. We worked together. It was like a posse. We became close friends. We used to eat together. We used to shit together. We used to work together. We used to make money together. We did everything fucking together. Before work and after work. Why was that? Because that became my fucking buddy. When you have a buddy system, what happens is you end up working way more than you would by yourself. Because by yourself, it's, uh, you can do it. But when you have someone to talk to, yo, what's up, man? I got four sales right now, bro. You got three? Ha <laughs> Right? And having that competitiveness with someone that you actually respect, like, and, and trust, it's amazing. I'm not saying if you're fucking a beast, don't fucking get with a new guy as a buddy. Find someone that's on your level or someone that's a little bit better than you so you can kind of stretch you a little bit. So he was good. He was good. And he, we were always competing with each other, right? That's what kept us in the game. So when he used to get fucking two, I used to get fucking three sales. 
When he used to be be beating me, I'd be fucking angry as shit. Which led me to the next thing. When I got fired from that company, the next fucking day, I'm working in the competition, which was, was Verizon, right? So I had a friend. At the first couple of days, I was trying to work with a guy named Jose. The guy was supposed to train me. The guy disappeared his first fucking day. I didn't see him ever again. I, you guys told, I told you guys a story. I was supposed to get trained by someone. And nobody trained me because he fucking disappeared. I don't want to fuck it. He was like, I'll be right back. I never saw him again. Swear to God, it's the funniest shit ever. We get out of the car. He's like, yo, I got to do a follow. I'll be right back. I said, cool, no problem. It's my first day. I don't know how to do shit. He took off to the lab. I'm like, where the fuck did he go? He left. I'm like, okay, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. I'm like, I'm not fucking waiting for him. I'm going to start knocking. First door, no one answers. Second door, a guy opens the door, and I'm supposed to be selling this guy. I'm fucking pitching him. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. I, I, the guy's like, yes. I was like, awesome. Yo, I call Jose. No one's fucking answering. I'm like, this fucking guy. I call the manager. I'm like, yo, bro, I don't know what's going on. I need some help. Jose's not here. He's like, where's Jose? I'm like, I'll tell you after. So he helped me make my first fucking deal. Long story short, never seen Jose again. 